unidentifiable flying object. <laughs> UFO continues to be a mystery. Wasn't alone in space. Sightings of UFOs. Something out there. <laughs> Close enough to be observed. What could it be? It could only be anything. A UFO. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 98 of UFO Know Your Break from the Propaganda, the Bad News, and the Treasonous politicians and have some fun talking about topics like alien hybrids with me back from his short hiatus it's nathan what's up nathan how are you man well hello how you doing bud i'm doing good man how you doing good dude good i'm ready to talk about some alien hybrid action Mm, they're everywhere they're, they are everywhere seemingly that's what it seems like that's the word mm-hmm. at the watering hole is that, the word is that, on the street. Is that <laughs> alien hybrids are everywhere uh yeah it's very interesting um there was here's a couple of things that i am skeptical of if you've heard the show i'm very skeptical of hypnotic regression which pops up in fucking everything and alien hybrids, only because there's a lot of different things that are taking place there. With alien hybrids, you have an agenda, you have aliens having sex with humans or artificial insemination, whatever it might be. And then with hypnotic regression, you basically have a hypnotist that is taking a brain and writing it if he wants, but guiding people to memories. Hugely a vulnerable aspect of of this is hypnotist uh, hypnotism where you know once again you could they could implant memories they could guide you to false memories whatever uh like i like so to sketchy. that's right and like i like to say uh it's like giving them a book with a pen and telling them don't write in it just just read just guide me through the words that's a lot of power uh and these and, people are career driven that's what that exactly That's exactly it, is that they have a career in this. They have a career in this. In my opinion, one of the most rare phenomenon on the planet, if it even exists, and you have an entire career of people that are just hypnotizing folks to gain memories. Now, there's also hypnotic regression when it comes to trauma, but I don't think there's a blending of the fields it's what it seems like. It seems like there is this select group of hypnotists that do aliens, and then there's the rest. It's what it seems like. I, I'm not an expert in, in uh, the field of hypnotism, but that's what it seems like. You know, you have the stage type that go up there, make people cluck like a chicken, and then you have the trauma type like therapy, and then you have the aliens. Specialists. Yeah. Oh, and then, of course, well, the therapy would be included, the stop smoking and all that. But even, you know, again, it's just, it's very curious. So that's why. But uh, before we get into it all the way, I want to thank you all for joining the show. We're in the stratosphere, cruising at about 116,000 feet. And it's clear skies, baby. If you like the show, be sure to share this episode. Give a nice review everywhere. Apple iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Audible. We are literally everywhere. Everywhere. So give us a review. Five stars, if you will. It fits in nicely with all the rest. Hit that subscribe button if you're on Rumble, if you're on the YouTube. It all really, really helps a lot. And also be sure to go click that link in the show notes portal to all things ufo no get yourself some sweet ass merch go support the show at patreon.com slash ufo no podcast where you will get every single bit of my loyalty zero ads and uh a bunch of bonus content including a bonus episode every week and i'm uh i i swear i say this every time i i think i've been saying it for 30 years i'm going to be adding content very very soon uh but we are so i finally got my shit people I finally got my shit together. I got some some good equipment. It's about goddamn time, so now I can really do some things. 
So it's beautiful. That's right. It's We're going to keep the hits setup. coming. We're going to hit mm-hmm. keep the hits coming. Uh, so, anyways, again, click that link in the show notes portal. All things UFO. No, but let's get right into it. So, as I was saying, um, hypnotic regression and alien hybrids. Very skeptical. But let's go over this alien hybrid thing. We're going to look at a couple authors, but I, I want to bring this up. So in 2013, uh, we actually talked about this in one of our bonus episodes. 2013, scientists found one of the world's oldest human DNA in a 400,000-year-old thigh bone that they described as containing evidence of an alien species. Okay. Then you have a story that pops up online, uh, 2015 about a dead body later identified as a man named Jeffrey Allen Lash found decomposing a car in Los Angeles. Now they don't really have a huge amount tied together aside from this. In both of these cases, you have in, in you have scientists that say this old fossil contains alien DNA. This guy claimed to be an alien hybrid secret agent that had alien DNA. Here's the hard part. I know, I know. Now, here's the hard part. Is, is the 400,000-year-old thigh bone alien DNA or is it DNA that we haven't found out what it is yet? Meaning alien. Unidentified. Alien to us or extraterrestrial? Well, that's the thing is I think there's a big difference between unidentified and alien. We don't, I mean, that's why if you look mm-hmm. and you say UFO, you don't say alien craft. You say a UFO. It's unidentified. We don't know if it's aliens flying it. In this case, I think, and I don't know for sure, that they don't know that it's extraterrestrial DNA. They just know that it is probably not human. But in my opinion, that doesn't necessarily make it alien yet. Yet, it could be. It very well could be. Uh, But what I want to do is get into this story first of this guy, Jeffrey Allen Lash. And it's a very, very interesting story. So here's the idea. He was a he claimed to be a spy that ran covert operations after 9-11 and he seduced women in LA. Uh, oh, that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> And when police found him in his car, they ended up investigating him and found that he had $5 million and a bunch of guns, like $5 million in guns along with a ton of cash stashed in his homes, um, numerous homes with a bunch of cars and everything. Anyways, it's really, really crazy. The way they described it is like, uh, anyways, let's, let's get into it. So, um, let's see, oh, man, I, I, I took the, the wrong article. Damn it. Well, anyways, here, uh, here's, here's the deal. I'll give you the, I'll give you the rundown. I didn't even put Nate in here. God damn it. There he is. Um, so here's the deal. They find $2.7 million worth of homes. He's got all these cars, like 15 cars. He's got um, two different women. One of them works for him. Uh, The other one's dating him. And so here's the deal. So he ends up giving the one lady uh, instructions that on his death, he is to, damn it, let me just read this story. Here's the article. All right, let's let's read the article. It's so wordy. That's why I got the wrong one. Damn it. 
It's like so when you worried. go to get those recipes and you just want to get the ingredients. Yeah, exactly. like it was a exactly. windy autumn evening and the wind was blowing north by northeast. That's right. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> ridiculous. Oh, ridiculous. Um. All right. So let's just read into uh, like well tended balconies, the hills of Pacific Palisades, where this all took place, rise abruptly from the sea and sloping terraces given the place. Oh, brother, it doesn't even go into the thing. OK, so July 15th, the Post, which was a common publication at the time, ran a story online about this guy where they discovered hundreds of high-powered assault rifles, pistols, $230 in money, and more than six tons of ammo. Yeah. Uh, So they found him in the passenger seat of an SUV on Palisades Drive, dead for two weeks. So after months... Yeah, after months of an investigation... um, that involved secret government agencies. All this, the, the story of this guy involves secret government agencies, covert black ops missions, aliens. And so they end up going into it. Police two years. Uh, what is it? Oh, whoa. Uh, two years after he dies, two women come forward fighting in court um, to recoup what they say is their share of the millions of dollars this guy had, okay? Um, I'm trying to get to their names. Uh, Let's see. Where's the name? Where is her name? Man, I'm really blowing this one, aren't I? Anyways, boy, this this story, I should have, fuck. <laughs> anyways, I'll give you the basic rundown. Uh, so anyway, so all this money, he tells the one lady he's dating. There's another lady that works for them arranging for like storage stuff. So they they basically, she handles all the day-to-day business dealings of like storage of the vehicles, uh, mm-hmm. rental of the properties, all that kind of shit um, while he's a secret agent. So the lady, the his girlfriend gets instructions that two weeks after, or I'm sorry, that after his death, she is to leave him, like not go and find him. He's going to be in this, in this car, which he was. Um, she's supposed to leave him and just leave town, get out of town because he says that there's going to be people after him, after her. So she does, but after two weeks, he's uh, it, it's something supposed to happen. It doesn't happen, so she ends up coming back, notifying the police. Police go investigate, find all this shit, and then that's where it comes out that she, these two women go to court over these millions of dollars, and it comes out that yeah. he was a secret agent, alien hybrid, and mind you, it came out like I'm, I'm getting the story mixed up, man. Um. Anyways, all right, man. You're doing all right. You're doing Thank good. You. I appreciate that. Uh. No. So what? Basically, he's just a secret agent, but there's no verifying that it's true. There's no verifying that this is the actual case. No medical records, no nothing. He was found dead, what they seem as natural causes um, in the car. And so basically it comes down to this. I really apologize that I didn't have that article the right way. I don't know what happened. I had two articles. Apparently I grabbed the wrong one and threw it in there. Good Lord. And it would it would take me too long to just find another one, you know, because I'd have to pre-screen all of them. Here's the hard part. Is he a con man? I would say for sure he is. Was he really it's an a alien? successful con man. A what? If he was, he was very successful. 
very successful, assuming that these women weren't completely, you know, and utterly gullible and stupid. You no, know, it sounds like that, but I'm just saying, I mean, you've got all these cars, weapons, all this money, all oh, these yeah. houses. No, that's true. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. I mean, certainly if you're working, if you're a government secret agent, the government is not going to verify that you were doing that. There's not going to be any trackable funds, I would imagine. So they're not going to be able to trace the money anywhere. It doesn't seem like they found drugs anywhere. So it's, it, it's not tying back to drugs, but Why would somebody say that they were an alien hybrid aside from just wanting to be one? I'm curious if, because I couldn't find anything about it. Because what I tried to do is I tried to take this from the angle of like, what made these women fall for this? But I couldn't really get anything on that perspective. It was just the perspective of what the story was. What I'm curious is there's crazy things though. Yeah, what I'm crazy, uh, uh, what I, what I'm, what I'm curious about is what about this guy? Aside from the money, was it? I mean, them going to court and fighting over the money says to me they were just in it for the money. Mm-hmm. That it didn't matter. The alien hybrid thing didn't matter, but that, but that it was actually, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. And so that's where I'm, I'm. You know, the fact that these two women worked for him, because that's kind of the take of like a lot of, from from the UFO angle, from the community that wants to believe this. They they say, well, these women believed him. I mean, he, he clearly, uh, you know, had expressed alien hybrid behavior. And I'm like, well, people are weird. People can be really weird. There's a ton of people that claim they're psychic that aren't psychic. There's a ton of people. You can turn your TV on and see that. There you go. There's a ton (laughs) of people that claim to be mediums of all kind. You know, Mm -hmm. be able to sense. I mean, look, as you said, you can turn on the TV and see all kinds of that stuff. You can watch all kinds of ghost hunters things, all types of those type paranormal shows where people Mm -hmm. claim to be able to feel things. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't people out there that can. But what's the likelihood that all of them have a TV show? You know, they mm-hmm. just, every single one of these people just also happen to have a TV show. You know, where I, it just, it, it's very hard for me to take these people seriously because there's, there's incentive. You know, that's the hard part. I mean, but all, at the same time, <laughs> not very many people are going to take a, a tortured psychic uh, seriously if he's got mental problems. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So if he's all crazy, because you could say a lot of crazy people on the street kind of exi- uh, could exhibit alien hybrid behavior that they're saying the end is nigh. Uh, that turns out to be true. You know, so maybe who knows, but well, I botched that first story, but have no fear. Oh, you know what, Nate, you've got stories. You know, I had put in my top 10 possibilities of either alien human hybrids yeah. or are they just aliens in disguise? Oh, yeah. yeah. And I got, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. They're a little mixed. Uh, my number 10 here is Mick Jagger. Oh, <laughs> oh, for mm-hmm. sure. For sure. It, moves like Jagger. No Nobody's way. got moves like Jagger. Clearly alien. Yeah. Clearly. And, you know, and I think that guy was around since you know, the dawn of time. Like, he's been around for fucking ever. Do you mean Keith Richards <laughs> or Mick Keith Jagger? Richards. Keith Richards. My bad. No, no, no. I, you're, you're absolutely right. Well, <laughs> Mick Jagger's been around a long time, too, but you're right. Keith Richards. Yeah. Keith Richards, man. That guy is just living forever. Not only that, man. I mean, he's he's done more drugs than anyone. Yeah. So it's just, it's insane to think how long he's lasted, <laughs> you know, must be the preservatives in cocaine and heroin. Might be. Maybe. It's not that I'm possible. saying anybody should do that. You're not going to live as long as he has. He's alien. 
Unless you're alien, then I, apparently you're able to do uh, exorbitant amounts of cocaine and heroin and be just fine. You remember that old heavy metal movie, man? I mean, they were pretty heavy on that, too. That's true. That's very, very true. <laughs> very true. Aliens dig it. Yeah. Anyways, number nine. Now, I know we don't get political, and this isn't a political statement. It's just kind of my personal view, but number nine is Hillary Clinton. <laughs> yeah. Because that's just a lot of concentrated evil for one person. And I also just kind of don't like to admit she might be one of us. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah no, I, I hear you that. I, I think they're, uh, if they're not reptilians, they're absolute snakes, which is mm-hmm. a, an insult to snakes. It really is. Yeah. I mean, snakes are pretty cool. I love a good danger noodle. <laughs> danger noodle. I don't even know what you're saying right now. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. <laughs> All right. And so uh, this next one, now you're going to recognize this one, but if we have any listeners that might be younger than us, you may not know this guy, but his name is Gary Busey. Oh, Gary He's- Busey. Yeah. He's a famous actor. He's been in a lot of cool movies like Lethal Weapon, Point Break. And my favorite one was Black Sheep with Chris Black Farley. Black Sheep, that's right. Spade. That's right. So love good. That. But, but, I mean, you look at him now, and it looks like his Edgar suit is failing him. Oh, dude, that's exactly what I was thinking. His Edgar suit. That's hilarious. Yeah. So, for those that don't know, that is a, a Men in Black reference. Mm-hmm. When... The the very first alien comes down, the cockroach guy, and look, if if you're saying, hey, spoiler alert, man, go fuck yourself. It's Men in Black, okay? If you haven't watched like it yet. years old. Jesus. What's the matter with you? Anyways, but um, crashes down, takes over the dude, walks in the house, drinks a bunch of sugar. Then the agents come, and they interview her, and she describes it as an Edgar suit. Dude, that was such a deep cut right there that you pulled out. That was mm-hmm. wonderful. Thank you. That sent me on a on a wonderful journey reminiscing about that movie. That's, I love the Man in Black series. My brother took me to go see that one in the theaters, and it was just amazing. It's good stuff, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. Edgar's suit. That's a great way to describe it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It looks like his jaw is trying to leave his body. Mm-hmm. I mean, just like his bottom teeth are trying to escape his face. It's, yeah. It's weird. It's just, I love, I mean, I love him to death. Don't kill me, Gary Busey, yeah. but he's we a funky you, looking guy. Hilarious. Yeah. Hilarious. I love it. Number seven is Carrot Top. Oh, for fucking sure, dude. See, that's not fooling anyone. Nobody. <laughs> Who gets that ripped and doesn't cut their hair? Mm-hmm. Come on, man. You're going to cut your muscles and not your head? Like, what the hell? I mean, I love it's him. Hard. I love watching him, but dude, I mean, he's, he just looks more and more sad. <laughs> like, the more muscles he gets, the more depressed he seems. I, th- I think mm-hmm. maybe because he was thinking, like, the muscles would make people not see him as a ginger. I, I don't know. I don't know what happened there, but, uh, but it anyways. just made it harder to look at. I, I mean, he is <laughs> fascinating, but he um, he, he's hilarious. He's a super funny guy, uh, but mm-hmm. but yeah, dude, it's yeah, hilarious. Yeah, that's that's right. very true. <laughs> so number six. Now this one's a little more on the serious side because this one, like I I remember when I saw this, I couldn't just I couldn't stop looking at him. So he was the former Nestle CEO, Peter Brabeck LeMay. He was famously quoted for stating, water is not a human right. Now, as he's in this, water is not a human right. What's his name, Peter what? Peter Brabeck Let Mace. Mace? Let Mace, L-E-T-M-A-T-H-E. But if you look this guy up, he's got this eye, and it's just black and red and it's just like his reptilian is showing right okay and, okay and when you look into it they explain it as he has a medical condition and it will only take it's curable and will only take six months of treatment 
not what it is, you no know, breakdown, or not, just a medical condition. Very vague, very blanket explanation. Mm. And I'm showing week, the audience right now on video. Mm. Those of you that uh, aren't watching the video, you can Google this, or I'll put a link in the show notes. And the reason why that screams reptilian to me is like water is Earth's best resource. Yeah. And if, and if you keep up with your different alien species, reptilians have a dominance. They want to set a dominance over the human species. And what better way to do that than water? And that guy's reptilian was showing. <laughs> that is a crazy thing to say. Mm. The CEO of Nestle saying that water is not a human right. Former. CEO now. Former, yeah. Well, that's because, hey, go yeah. fuck him. You know, that's Jesus. Yeah. What a douche. Crazy, right? Yeah, that is crazy. Yeah. So I'm thinking he's an alien in disguise for sure. Yeah, not much of a disguise. No. That's yeah. scary. Huh? That's right. All right. So number five. And I think possibly <sighs> percentage. Oh. Did you hear that? I did hear that. Holy shit, you can sound hear my sounds, buddy. I hear your sound. That's sweet, crazy. Sweet. What a way to break the <laughs> I love wind how the on first that. one you hear is a fart. <laughs> 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 oh my god, that's great. <laughs> so what that's better bad. way? I mean, the most random thing I decided to play that you oh, because we look, for those of you that are going, what the fuck is going on? We've the whole thing is he can't hear my sounds when I play them usually. And so we've tried this multiple times and he can't hear it. And literally I just now just go, eh, fart noise. And he, <laughs> Oh God, that's too good, man. That's hilarious. Oh shit. That's amazing. That's great. Well, we're back. We're back. That's right. <laughs> oh, what a way to, Oh, what a way to get it back. Oh, nothing like a good fart. Oh shit. That's too good, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh right, Jesus. So that's great number five now this is just opinion but i think it possibly a percentage of the olympic athletes because however amazing and extravagant they are because i love watching the olympics do you but oh dude some of the shit that they do on there is just mind-blowing i mean i agree some the of it you're skill, right. some of it is boring strength, as shit. Yeah, dude, some of it is really boring as hell. But yeah. then they get in some of these competitions and like the strength and the dexterity of some of these people, that just seems yeah. not right. Like not normal human. Like a lot of them is just hardcore training. So I'm not saying anything bad against the athletes. Look, man, I am saying, Dennis Rodman a hundred percent is an alien. Dude, yeah, that guy's definitely one hundred percent. I love how we keep mention like uh, they mentioned Dennis Rodman in Men in Black, so it just keeps popping mm -hmm. up Men in Black. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, dude, I mean, some of them, some of them for sure. Some of them just like seem inhuman. Almost. Yeah, yeah. Michael Jordan's competitive streak is uh, is almost alien. He's abnormal. Abnormal. Imagine. So number four is drifting off to the one serial side, but to me it just seems possible hybrid, maybe disguise, but mainly just because it's just so much evil in one person and it just screams reptilian because of the urge for dominance, but Hitler. Oh, well, his drive, his drive into the occult, his lust to get to the moon, now, I'm pretty sure I could be wrong on this. this is, like I said, this is just opinion. You know, there's no fact or fiction to this. Sure. My but. one thing that I, because that I, I've, I've, I've thought about that as well. I've read some theories about that as well, talking about, you know, mm -hmm. exactly what you mentioned, his drive for the occult, his drive for alien technology and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I like to keep in mind with this is that, and I once again, I know that you're not saying anything about this one way or the other, but. Yeah. I just like to keep in mind that humans are capable of that kind of evil. Oh, hell yeah, you they know, are. Like, you don't have to just be alien to commit that type of evil. 
It just happened yeah. to be that this guy also had a funky mustache and was into, into weird <laughs> shit. And so that's yeah. why you go, well, not only was he evil, but he may have also been an alien. You know, and so, mm-hmm. yes, I hear what you're saying, but I just, there's a lot of people, because I've had that where they go, you know, they say, oh, well, you know, you're, you're, you're saying that humans aren't capable of that evil. And I go, well, no, no, no. no humans, humans are humans absolutely, definitely are. absolutely. But he also could have been, he exhibited some very weird, could have been the meth, but it also could have been alien. Yeah. Could have been. I like it. Most definitely. I like it. Oh, yeah. And yeah. People are just shitty all, all together when they get power. You know, oh, yeah. like, oh, yeah. Power the more crops. power you have, the more abuse, you know. Yeah. Uh, number three is Paul Rudd. What? Just be- <laughs> what? Because. He's aging backwards. Oh, I agree with that. <laughs> I agree with that. He looks fantastic, but dude, I, you know what? He looks Actually, fantastic. I know love what? Paul Rudd, but that's that's crazy. <laughs> you know what? You might be onto something there, Nate, mm-hmm. because you know what? If you think about it, he is too nice. Way too nice. He's so nice, amazing. and if if you look at him, you would think this is how an alien would want a human to be. Right. This is exactly what an alien would think. How could I be the best human possible? I'll smile all the time. I'll never age. I'll be the friendliest human imaginable. I'll make millions laugh. I'll inspire people. I'll be incredibly good looking. Dude. Dude, I bet you him and Keanu Reeves are cut of the same cloth. Oh, holy shit, dude. Right. They're alien blood brothers. The alien brothers, man. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Thank you for visiting, guys. Make more movies. That's right. That's fucking teamwork. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's that's great. I love it. That is a hundred percent, a hundred percent accurate, Paul Rudd. Uh, it just makes sense. You know, it's funny because here I'm like, here I'm like, don't say Hitler's an alien. Humans are capable of that. But then we take the nicest human on the planet and go, no way, dude. He's definitely alien. No way he's human. (laughs) Oh, that's great. (laughs) Oh, shit. Uh, Who else you got on that list? All right. Coming on to the top two here. Top two. I wish I had a drummer. Coming in, and, and this was a tough call for me. I didn't know which one to put where, oh. but I, I hopefully I got this in the right order. Number two is Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> he has a strong reputation for Psycho, and he, he's a major contributor to Scientology and has been claimed to possibly even be a leader. And I don't know how much you know about that, but that is some pretty Dude, L. Ron hardcore... Hubbard. Yeah, that's some pretty crazy shit right there. Look, let me tell you and, something. If I'm yeah, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, if you yeah. if you think Scientology is a legit religion, go read Battlefield Earth by L. Ron Hubbard and come back to me and tell me that it doesn't change your mind. I'm tell L. Yeah. Ron Hubbard is an absolute fuck. Look, he, he stole Jack Parsons' girlfriend during sex rituals left him depressed. <laughs> That's why he got kicked out of NASA and supposedly opened up a portal to summon a goddess that he could fuck. I'm telling you, L. Ron Hubbard is the devil. <laughs> Along with Stephen Greer, but yes, I'm telling you. And wherever Tom Cruise goes, he leaves a big wake of what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like Oprah's couch. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck was that about? I'm in love with whoever the fuck it was. Dude, you can ask anybody he's worked with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, though, man. You can't be normal and do what he does. This guy does his all, all of his own stunts, still looks incredible, and is really fucking weird. I like, counter that with Jackie Chan. <laughs> Okay, well, let's just get one thing straight. Jackie Chan (laughs) does not look like Tom Cruise. You can say that's racist, but I say it's Asian. I'm just telling you. 
Dude, dude, Jackie Chan's way better looking than Tom Cruise. He's, he's, a, he's a stud, man. He is a stud. He is a stud. You're they right. Need to do dude. an MMA match. So we'll wait, is Tom that Cruise your top two, Jackie, Jackie Chan. Chan and Tom Cruise? No, I nope. My number one is Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's an android, dude. He's not a. He's not an alien. He's an android. Okay, but we're going back to Built men by black aliens. reference here. We're going back to men in black a reference here. Remember that old guy that had, he was in the robot suit, but he was in the head control. Oh, the it. little guy. The little guy with the big eyes, a cute little alien dude. Yep. Yeah, okay, yep. that that could very well be Zuckerberg. You know what you know what I always remember from that guy? Hmm. Ba, 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 belt. That's it. That's it. I don't. That, nothing else. That's every time. I just remember that little popping noise that he made when he was trying to say belt. It's it's the I it's it's amazing. I just like, dude. That's the greatest thing they could have ever wrote that guy to do. Is try and say belt. It's on Orion's. Belt. I just I die every time, dude. I'm like, he just can't get it out. <laughs> Oh shit, man! So that's what you think? You think that uh, that Zuckerberg is a tiny alien inside of that fucking weird ass face? Hell yeah! Okay, oh yeah. yeah, I like it. I like it, dude. That is a phenomenal list. That is a phenomenal list. I appreciate it. I love it, man. <laughs> that's that's rad. That is so good. Oh man. <laughs> You're spot on, too. You're spot on. You're spot on, dude. That's phenomenal. Oh, that's great. That was fun. Well, thank you. That made up for my whole botch of the first uh, first 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, however much I tortured you people with that horrendous <laughs> uh, testament to my unpreparedness. Well, when you're flying at 165,000 feet in blue skies, you tend to sometimes hit a little turbulence. We lose so. track of the course, people. We lose track of the course. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, believe it or not, this uh, this gentleman who died in the desert claiming he was a, uh, a, a, a secret agent alien hybrid wasn't the only one to claim he was a hybrid. So aside from your people that you think are hybrids, these people think they're hybrids. So this guy, Eddie Page, um, oh, wait no. a second. What? Wait a second. Yes. So if you think that you are a hybrid, can't you just go get to a fucking medical appointment and get that tested? Like, hey, take some blood. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to go into, uh, I think it's this guy, actually, that claims his father was an alien and has his DNA to prove it. So let's get into the story. This story, I actually know the article works because I perused it. Fuck. Never make that mistake again. Uh, a man from Florida, Eddie Page, said he was a hybrid alien. So it all started with numerous UFO sightings in the form of a high-speed boomerang, which he saw at the age of 11. But uh, when he joined the U.S. Marine Corps in 1972, he went to Vietnam on a top-secret mission uh, with an elite group of special services. According to Page, something went wrong. Vietnamese soldiers suddenly attacked him from the bushes, and he lost consciousness when he woke up. It seemed to him that only a few minutes had passed. He was laying on a green rice field, in a special black uniform for protection from infrared radiation, but he had no weapons and no equipment. While he was trying to find out what happened, military helicopters flew to him. American soldiers jumped out, grabbed him, and started interrogating him. It turned out that the rice field was more than 500 miles from his original landing point, and since he was attacked, 11 days had passed. This period of time, he could not remember at all. So, uh -huh. Yeah. So after three months of interrogation, several doctors from Germany and other parts of Europe were sent um, to look him over. 
And it turned out that he had an unusual condition of internal organs and abnormal blood type. Page's military medical records said not of human origin. Basically, wow. that he wasn't completely human. He was eventually released and returned to his normal life. Now, I did some follow-up on this idea of abnormal blood type. Okay? We're okay. talking about the 70s. No, wait. Late 60s, early 70s, right? Yeah. So... During this time, they didn't have the type of um, technology that we do now for blood screening, okay? We have all these different blood types now that we know about. It is possible, and I checked this with a nurse. I, I, I asked a nurse because I know, you know, my girl is uh, in the nursing field. She knows a bunch of nurses, so I asked a bunch of nurses. What would it mean to have an abnormal blood type or an unknown blood? blood type and they said well back then there were certain blood types that weren't screened for they didn't know about them so it would have yeah. come up as unknown blood type or undetermined blood mm. type so that's where i'm thinking this came from is that, that he's calling it alien when now look that just maybe he never got his blood checked again who knows Again, but, it's breaking down alien to unidentified. It's a misinterpretation. Mm -hmm. So as with a lot of things, it's misinterpreted. But I said that weird. But the idea that you could have an unknown blood type versus an alien blood type, it's the same idea of what I said before as far as a craft being unidentified and not alien, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Mm -hmm. We don't know. The unknown doesn't make it alien. You're trying to identify it. You're labeling it when it has no label. That's different. That's human interpretation. So, anyways, um, he was eventually released, returned to his normal life. He never told what ended up happening in the rice field, what happened during those 11 days. So, after years, uh, he has a wife, he has a kid, He's not allowed to see the kid uh, due to all this stuff, apparently. Um, then they ended up disappearing, uh, I guess, and he never saw him again. So there's some trauma there. You know, I mean, not that I'm trying to pick on anybody, but, you know, you have some trauma. Things happen in your brain and you feel yeah. down about yourself. You want to make more of yourself for obvious reasons, you know. So anyways, um. So he decides to go under hypnotic regression to reconstruct what happened during those 11 days. And this is when he remembers that his mission and his entire unit had been destroyed. He was abducted by aliens from the Platy star system who came to save him from death because he was also shot. He was taken to a spaceship surrounded by three or four little aliens in silver suits and he remembered that he was immersed in some kind of liquid that actually healed his wounds. And he says that through telepathy, he heard te telepathy. Yeah. Telepathy. What, I don't know. Am I saying that weird? Uh, he no, heard, you're good. He heard the little beings say, not one of my sons will be killed. So it's an anti-war statement. So, you know. He was through the war. I'm just trying to put this together as a psychological thing of like, yeah. he's got trauma. He's, he's now very anti-war. You know, he's got trauma from that. So now he's like, we need to end this war. I'm not going to allow my kid, my, you know, my, my fellow soldiers to be killed. Maybe. Mm -hmm. So according to Eddie, he was originally part of their program to create hybrid children, children, which was conducted with the cooperation of the government and that he's a real hybrid alien, <laughs> one of 32 clones in this experiment consisting of 21 women and 11 men and only eight clones survived. Okay, now, a couple of things. Remember that story we talked about, about the lady who claimed to be abducted? Remember the really horrifying tale of 
her going through all this crazy stuff, right? Yeah, Insane stuff. For those of you that haven't listened to the episode, go check it out. But like this lady talks about basically women being treated like cattle by aliens, being herded through these these areas and um, you know, being artificially inseminated by like half alive men that their lower half is saved, preserved, and that their st- their dicks are stimulated with tubes and shit. To artificially inseminate like what there's so many easier ways to do that i mean that wouldn't be a terrible way to live after death i mean <laughs> you're just a waste yeah yeah oh, i mean brother. if i'm already dead at least part of me is getting that's all some that's something only a dude would say <laughs> something only a dude would say well let, at least my cock will live on <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> Hilarious. Long live helmet head. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that, what we pointed out is that she was the only one, according to her stories, there were thousands of women, hundreds of thousands of women being being torn apart, raped, all kinds of crazy, horrible, horrifying things that she describes that never happened to her. There's a there's a giant squid thing that that mounts her aunt and 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 penetrates her with its with its tentacle up her nose and in her mouth. Never happens to her. The cat yeah, she like spins to the next day just puking blood in the toilet. Yeah. She's like, oh, you're good. Have a nice day. Yeah. <laughs> but the girl, nothing happens to her. The cat is nope. impaled by a by a tentacle and dies. Nothing happens to her. The dog. Yeah, nope is mm-hmm. shot and and killed nothing happens to her her aunt dies of cancer nothing happens to her she she's abducted and 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 sent through this conveyor belt of her of horrifying shit nothing happens to her she comes out the other end with all this knowledge unscathed why why is she the only one when hundreds of thousands of women are going through this and she's in it. She's with them. Why was she spared? Same thing with this. Why is this guy out of eight out of his entire unit of people? They're all killed. He's somehow taken up to the aliens. And then also, he's one of eight surviving clones. So he's just, look, I mean, maybe this is true, but maybe this guy just wants to be special, which who doesn't? Who doesn't? But with some psychological trauma and a little spice of hypnotic regression, all of a sudden you're an alien abductee and a clone and an alien hybrid. Magic. Magic or lies. I'm not sure. Mm. (laughs) He also adds that uh, since then, he's been constantly harassed by secret agents. He has his metal, medical records to back up his claims. His documents state that he has strange internal organs and abnormalities in the composition of his blood. Now, look, that does not say alien. Strange internal organs. What the fuck does that mean? How are they strange? You have a upside-down liver. You have 14 Pretty livers. Hard. Like what? I don't I don't understand what that means. You have strange internal organs and abnormalities in the composition of his blood. That could mean anything. That could mean anything. That doesn't mean alien. And and for those of you that are going, damn, dude, you know, maybe he's telling the truth. You're right. He could be telling the truth. Uh but <laughs> if I'm telling a story about myself and I'm trying to convey that to people that I know are not going to believe me and you would have to be an absolute fucking fool to think that people are going to believe you at least right off the bat you would also have to be a fool to not come with some very specific evidence not strange internal organs and abnormalities in the blood 
No, 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 no. Specific terms, man. Specific. Let's get some x-rays. Let's see some pictures of these weird organs. It should be everywhere. It should be everywhere. If I legitimately, for one, okay, I am going to try and capitalize on that. If I have alien blood, I am going to try to capitalize on that. Same thing if I got pregnant. Same thing. If I get pregnant, I'm calling everybody. I'm calling everybody. I'm taking naked pictures. I'm getting measured. I'm get, Literally, if you've got a test to verify I'm pregnant that will write me a check, do it. Do it. You're telling me that this guy can't get paid for his alien blood. Can't get paid for his strange internal organs. A YouTube channel, a Twitch channel, fucking a vlog, whatever the okay. fuck. But at the same time, we're also talking what? You said the 60s, 70s? Yeah. There was none. We, we didn't have that back then. You're right. But there was a lot of tabloids. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. I mean, those tabloids are always talking about some lady that claims to have a, you know, a star child. You know, to to have, you know, been impregnated by an alien and then they left her with alimony. No, really. You know, and it's well, so. And if you have the hardcore proof and the evidence that this is what it is, even back then, that you could easily make a, a wake in the water. Blood work. As it was then, in fact, it wasn't even done. DNA was was barely done then. Yeah. If he had that kind of evidence, today, today, they could verify mm -hmm. that 100%. 100% they could verify that. Well, even today, like, let's, I, I mean, is this guy still alive? I mean, I'd imagine so. Yeah. And you could usually get that checked out today. And even if he wasn't, I mean, hell, we're getting DNA out of woolly mammoths. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Look, I don't understand the point of hypnotic regression. Who gives a fuck what happened in that 11 days if you have blood work? Who gives a fuck? You're never going to be able to prove it. You're never going to be able to prove it. It does nothing for your story. Keep it. Fine. Dwell on it. Fine. Tell it at family dinners. Fine. But you try and add that in as credibility to your blood work? I'm sorry. I'm looking at your blood work. I don't give a fuck about anything else. You say whatever you want. It happened in your head. It happened in your head. Until we get to the point where we can extract memories efficiently mm -hmm. efficiently not using one dude in a plaid suit that's when we're going to get some real answers on this and and my guess is that people are going to be few and far between to come forward and do that because all of a sudden mm -hmm. it will verify legit verify that you're full of shit or not and you then have you'll have the technology i'm telling you man when it gets to a point where you know you can't get buy on your hearsay that what you say is now extrapolated based on your memories and all that dude it's done mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> all this shit's done watch the accounts and the testimonies fall to the wayside because your hearsay is no longer valid which it's not valid to begin with but that's what people do they take shit like this and they go well this guy says and it's like well <laughs> i can say anything Mm -hmm. I can say anything. I can I, I could say anything. And I have because people can't verify, you know. There's actually I have a story of when I met uh my girl. I, I had a friend of mine and I didn't I was too nervous to talk to her. And I said, dude, you need to do me a favor. And he goes, What? I said, You need to because I was hanging out with him over at his house. I said, you need to tell, go, because he worked with her and we worked at the, all at the same place, but they worked in a separate department together and I worked in a different department by myself. Anyways, but <clears throat> I said, look, dude, you need to tell her that I was hanging out over here and I went to step over you and my huge cock fell out and I, and I fumbled to get it back in my pants and you were, you know, you were just stunned. 
And he's like, I'm not telling her that. I said, please, dude, just tell her. Just tell her. It'll break the ice. He goes, I'm not telling her that. I'm not telling her that. That's hearsay. That's hearsay. Now, obviously, that can be verified. You know, but, and it was highly accurate. But this, but this, this, the only way it can be verified is through this blood work. (laughs) It's through this blood work. Many more happy years to you both, man. (laughs) Thank you, my friend. Thank you, my friend. She's sore again today. Anyways, but. Yeah, at least buy her a cane. The hits just keep on coming. (laughs) Oh, brother. Anyway. Oh, this is what I need to do. Oh, brother. This guy stinks. (laughs) Oh, anyways. So, uh, in this story. Uh, oh wait, no, they go into their own, they go into their own. Yeah. So it, let's, let's read what they say. So in there, so our research group is confused by a couple of points. Firstly, this is a typical description. Palladians from the Pallades, silver suits. Their description was very well known and sounds like a preset in a normal situation. We'd be able to get more detailed information. Exactly. Talk about a template memory, dude, mm-hmm. a template memory. What's it going to do? So, and, and they're right. Silver suit, tiny people, it's template. We've said that before. Template memories where your brain fills in the details. If you've never seen an alien in a silver suit, there's no details to fill in. So you're not going to remember the details of the silver suit. It's going to be a generic silver suit because there were no details. It's things that you are already familiar with that you're going to be describe a lot of detail. That's why people describe things that they already recognize. Mm -hmm. Because literally there is no detail in this memory for your mind to fill in because you have never seen an alien in a silver suit. But this false memory is putting one there. So you're only going to yeah. fill in details of things you recognize around it. That's mm. why it's always generic saucer-shaped craft, generic cigar-shaped craft, generic whatever-shaped craft with very few details because we have, no, we have no frame of reference to fill in the blanks aside from media, which is why they all sound like something we've seen before. Dude, we fucking, we did it. We did it. Case solved. Fuck yeah. That's what we do here on UFO. No, we get to the bottom of shit. Look at us work that shit out. God damn it. We're good. Fuck yeah. That's right. Give us a little round of applause. We love you guys. Thank you. We love you guys. That's right. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's look, and I'll go back to what I said before. I want to believe these. Th- well, I don't necessarily want to believe that there's a, a an agenda by aliens in a breeding program, but I do. <laughs> they're, they're just breeding. I just hope they're breeding. <laughs> Give me some cream on <laughs> yeah, oh well. God damn, can you imagine that, dude? Can you imagine the first alien race we come across is the most brutal ra- I mean, look, think about this, okay? If you read about the history of Genghis Khan, and it is Genghis, not Genghis. If you look mm-hmm. at the history of this, the guy's a whore. Dude, people did not know like they had it was like aliens cuz they saw this barbaric culture these huge asian barbarian culture just surround their entire uh village whatever it was and 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 just decimate just kill whatever whoever didn't matter dude it was it was it was unlike anything they'd ever seen and it blew people's minds and, and, and that's, even to this day, his legacy still continues because he had impregnated so many women that's right. that there's even a whole culture out there where they're all linked to him. Yeah, that's right. Mongolian barbecue, bro. Mm-hmm. That's right. He revolutionized that. 
burning virgins. So now every time Damn. you have Mongolian barbecue, think about that. How many virgins yep. had to die to get you your Mongolian barbecue? A lot. Mm-hmm. A lot. That's how many virgins. So there is another lady who makes similar claims. Cynthia Crawford says she's a result of a secret government experiment. According to Cynthia, who lives in Arizona, her father had experimented with alien devices that they recovered from crashed alien ships. And while based in Korea in the early 1950s, her human mother was artificially impregnated with both her biological father's genes and alien genes. This comes out of a book by uh, David Jacobs. He's written several books on alien hybridization. I'm saying that wrong. And has taught American history at Temple University for over 30 years. He believes, based on his research, that aliens have been abducting humans for hundreds, if not thousands of years, that they artificially impregnate female abductees and keep the fetuses. And he also believes that they're walking among us right now, preparing to take over the world. As I've said before, we don't need an alien race to have an agenda to take over the world. We don't need to have a Mm -hmm. boogeyman. We have government. We have legitimate people on earth already and you can call them alien hybrids. I just call them evil. It is treasonous. happening right now. That's right. They're treasonous, treacherous bastards that are on they earth. They got good at being sneaky. That's what it is. That's right. And look, if you look at what these people claim these aliens are doing, it's very, very similar to what cretins that are politicians do. And that is, as you said, they sneak around. They manipulate they coerce. Mm-hmm. They they blend in. They're all they they try and they try and match energies and and you know they fake being human because they're not real humans. They're fake. Because they're evil. They're not real people. There's evil shells of people. Like mm-hmm. you said, the Edgar suit. Yep. I feel at a certain point once you reach a certain level of uh, evil. You just lose your soul and you are just, you're not even human anymore. That's right. Yep. Yep. So he also believes this Jacob's guy. um, Oh, I already said that. He points to a case of Linda Jones from Manchester in England as an example of this. So the story goes that 1979 on a late summer's evening, Linda and her two kids were picking flowers while they were walking along the Mercy River when one of her children shouted, the moon is coming towards us. Jones claims she saw a disc-shaped object heading towards them. Uh, Initially, she was curious, but as it got closer, she scooped up her children and ran. Uh, When they were safe at home, she realized she couldn't account for around 90 minutes of time. Of course, through hypnotic regression, she remembered a floating sensation. Then was in a room with three figures. They had large black almond-shaped eyes. Again, very template. No description of the room. No description other than large black almond eyes. Because that's the template. Everything else are details her brain can't fill in because she didn't have it in her. Now, here's what is interesting about this case. And, you know, maybe the floating and all that stuff, maybe it is interesting. To me, it's hearsay again. But over the next few weeks, she had crazy changes in her menstrual cycle. When doctors examined her, they determined she had recently been pregnant and had suffered an ectopic pregnancy. Do you know what an ectopic pregnancy is? I do not. So for those that don't know, this is a pregnancy where the fertilized egg implants outside the uterus. It's incredibly painful, incredibly painful. 
and it can be life threatening. But wow. the, the fertilized egg can't survive outside the uterus. And if it grows, if it's left to grow, it can kill the mother and the baby. So, in my mind, that means they saved her life. The aliens yeah. did. You know, it, 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 whatever they want to do with that fucking fetus, they saved her. An ectopic pregnancy yeah. is no joke. It's no joke. Damn. Yeah. Yeah horrible um women put up with a lot of shit dude it's nuts man i'm in awe all the time ladies mm -hmm. love ya. We salute you damn straight hold on maybe i should find a little something for the ladies do i have anything here we go just for the ladies <laughs> just kidding i love you i'm sorry <laughs> I love yeah. you. I really don't have I'm anything. I mean, I had the pussy button, but I'm not going to play that. That's worse than a fart. Anyways, I could have just done ballsy, maybe. I don't know. You're getting a TV dinner tonight. Oh, here we go. Here's a great... Here's a, <laughs> She doesn't listen to my show. Here's uh, here's, here's, <laughs> here's one for the ladies. Mine oh, either. Hot, 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 hot. There we go. There we go. Hot. So hot. So hot. Uh, all right, so when Linda's mystery fetus was removed without her knowledge as part of an agenda, or was it a takeover? Or I'm sorry, <laughs> Jesus. It was a takeover. I got all caught up in the sounds. Was it that they removed this without her knowledge as part of an agenda, or was it them just helping her is what I was getting at. The reason I say that is, if you listen to, if you look at the Travis Walton case, okay, very fascinating case of a guy, Fire in the Sky, fantastic movie. Go watch it if you haven't. But loggers driving, see something, a weird light, stop. One of the guys jumps out to go get a closer look, gets a little bit too close, gets zapped by something, and then ends up getting abducted. The guys take off. The other guys take off and then come back. By the time they come back, he's already gone. They leave it in town. Everybody accuses him of murder. He's gone for five days, comes back, ends up telling about how he had these memories of being abducted, being experimented, or not experimented on, but being kind of caught by these people. Now, at the time, he described it as terrifying. He didn't know what they were doing, da, 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 da. Now that you listen to him, he was on the Jogan podcast. Fantastic interview. Mm -hmm. That if was you, a good interview. It was great. If you listen to it, the main point that I got out of it was that he has dissected this multiple times in his mind. He's gone over this over and over. He's rethought about this. This is what's really fascinating that I find uh -huh. aside from most other accounts. Most other accounts... They're, they're, they stick to, dare I say, the script, okay? They have the story. Yep. They never deviate from it. Now, even though he didn't deviate from the story, his, his thoughts on why it happened and what was going on at the time has changed. That's so fascinating. So He has dissected it. He's played devil's advocate about yes. it. Like he was... He's even skeptical with himself. Yes, and he, he describes it as, you know, I wonder if it was a defense mechanism by their ship that hit me. It wasn't intentional. And that they brought me on board in order to fix their mistake. But when I came yeah. to, I was I had no idea what was going on. I was I was scared and I misinterpreted what they were doing. Now the way he describes it, which is very different from in the movie. In the movie very aggressive. They're trying to hurt him. They're trying to experiment on him. But in his, Hollywood. of course, but in his description, he describes it as they weren't experimenting on him. They were just trying to calm him down long enough to work on him and they couldn't calm him down. And he ends up getting off of the table. They leave. The beings leave. They can see he's frustrated. So they leave. They send in someone that looks like him. And now mm -hmm. he's the, the other person guides him out. So the way he looks at it now, he says, you know, I look at this now and I think 
they, I don't think they were trying to hurt me. I think they were trying to help me, but I was so freaked out. I couldn't see that. And, and yeah, my and panic, be freaked out. that's right. And my panic, my fear made it so they couldn't interact with me because they didn't want to hurt me. He doesn't say that, but that's what I'm interpreting out of it. That's, and, yeah, and, that's what I did. And then basically led him out to say, and apparently he, he was healed because he, he came out of it unscathed aside from uh, mm-hmm. some trauma, but that is fascinating. Fascinating to think that he has rethought the, what may have been taking place there and that he actually looked at it as, you know, so, so in that case, I look at it as like, this is very, very similar to that, that, they may have seen this in her and took her to help her mm-hmm. for what reason? I have no idea. You could speculate as to whatever reason. Who knows? Maybe the, one of the guys had the hots for her. maybe, maybe just maybe hear me out. Maybe they're future humans. And this lady is the ancient ancestor redundant to one of the future important whatever the fucks and in order to preserve these whatever the fucks they have to go back and save mother of whatever the fucks so that ectopic ectopic pregnancy could have killed that woman which would have meant that timeline of that woman ends And somewhere in that timeline, who knows how long, somewhere in that timeline, something happens. So they have to future humans that we've speculated before could very well be what we describe as aliens. Come back and scoop this bitch up and scoop that fetus out and send her on her way, a better woman. But as Mm -hmm. a lot of people do, she bitches and moans about it. But, dude, to me, that's just as likely as them trying to scoop up a fetus for shits and giggles to breed yeah. to breed it out. I think, look, she, she, I don't think that fetus could have made it. That's, the, I mean, no, that's kind I of the idea they're... of the ectopic pregnancy. So. It makes me wonder, you know, once again, to me, the logical thing is if this happened is that it's very similar to what happened with Travis Walton, except instead of this, their spacecraft didn't give this woman an ectopic pregnancy, or maybe it did. Maybe something they did, who knows? But otherwise, again, I would say this woman, her lineage is what is important. Her lineage, somewhere down the line, there's something crucial in this woman's timeline. Her future, whatever, the future generations that come after her that affects mankind. That's scarier than to me than some aliens coming down and, and giving her some scoop scoops. Yep. I'm telling you, dude, that is because to think that some random lady could have that large of a part to play in the future timeline, whatever down the line, to me is is so much more impactful than the idea of an alien coming down and wanting to collect a fetus out of a woman who just knew this woman wasn't going to make it anyways. You know what I mean? No, I get you. I agree with that. Yeah. So, I don't know. I uh, again, it could be it could be anything, but I think there's I think I want to believe that it's more in timeline than uh than just uh this lady this lady's fetus they wanted to breed it out. Yeah, no. So. Uh now the author Jacobs also says not only are a lot of people around the world being abducted by aliens for experimental purposes, but they are also being used as slaves to train these hybrid aliens to live on Earth waiting for the takeover. Now, I'm going to read on, but I want you to keep in mind something. Yeah. This is an advanced alien race. 
supposedly capable of telepathy, of abducting humans, traveling the cosmos, galactic travel. all this stuff. I want you to keep that in mind that they, humans, humans, abducted humans have to train hybrid aliens. Abducted humans, non-advanced training advanced hybrid aliens to live on earth like unadvanced humans. Okay. All right. Here we go. Scary to think. <laughs> <laughs> but as I, as I pointed out, okay. And I'm going to say this real quick before I move on. Cause I mentioned slaves and as I got to do, I got to point out the government. <laughs> it is scary to think that there could potentially be an alien race out there abducting people to for slave training of alien hybrids. But let me just remind you all, as I've pointed out before, you don't need the boogeyman as in an alien to have slaves on earth. You have governments. You have governments that incentivize debt that is, you know, indentured servitude. Mm -hmm. You have the prison system. You have you have actual slavery going on around the world that is absolutely sanctioned by governments. Oh yeah. Every single one of those countries has a government. There's slave trades going on. And as bad mm -hmm. as America might be, we don't have that. We we have we have uh subverted uh, uh, uh slavery. We don't have out and out slavery. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, no, I agree with that. We're, we're it, it's what I call organized slavery. There you go. There, that's a great way to describe it. Organized slavery, indeed. So again, you don't need to have a slave tour guide for hybrids. You don't, you don't need to be one of those. You're a slave to the system established by the elite, which you could describe as alien overlords. Because what? how are you going to fight them? How are you going to fight them? They might as well be in outer space. They might as well be. They're, you're, they're untouchable. They're untouchable. What are you going to do about it? It's just as likely as the alien threat that we're not going to do much about it. Good news is we know people die. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. But uh, there are accounts of people losing control of their bodies and being led by invisible forces to a, a specific location. In fact, I did an episode, uh, The Missing 411. And there was numerous accounts there where people seemed to just wander off. People that were familiar with the train, that were, in fact, they were survivalists. Like, they were trained in these areas, not only these areas, but in survival in general. They just wandered off and disappeared. Like they were being led off by something. Hmm. There's an account of and in quotations, Allison, uh, who had dodged her alien hybrid escort, as in her, her alien hybrid, uh, you know, like supervisor, wandered into a, a strange room containing a semicircle of 40 tilted back coffin-like boxes that contained grays immersed in liquid. According to Allison's claims, the boxes suddenly moved and tilted forward so the liquid drained out of them and the gray alien stepped out. When her escort came in and found her, took her out of the room, Allison started asking, what the hell was that? And her escort told her the aliens were eating and sleeping. Eating and sleeping. Eating goo, sleeping in goo. So Jacob writes that this aspect of the aliens, quote unquote, getting nutrition through dermal absorption is consistent with other accounts in his files. Again, 
I, I would lead that to template memory. Mm-hmm. Template memory. How is it that you have all these interesting races, all these interesting crafts, and yet the it always same comes back to the same thing? Yeah, the same details, the same accounts over and over and over and over and over again. Now, people look at that and say, well, that consistency means it's true. Or that consistency could mean that it's it's a, a template memory. Yes, it's a clue to the fact of the. It's like a narrative. Mm. It's like a narrative. You if you start to see it pop up everywhere, you go, hold on, everybody's in on this. You know, well, either you have all these alien races that are doing it the exact same way, or you have these people who have a template memory that they just know how to implant government, man. Absolutely. Now, something he points out that's different from other claims of aliens being far advanced in treating humans like livestock. These beings were fascinated by the complexity of human existence, the complexity, everything from living in a house or an apartment to buying, storing and eating food. And that they needed to understand the rules of humanity. They need to understand them. He believes that these aliens specifically named insectilins and greys. Or insectilians, maybe, is what he means. Insectilians, maybe, yeah, yeah, sounds about right. And greys come from a collective society in which individuality and personal lives are virtually non-existent and have limited and narrow emotional ranges with a lack of sarcasm, irony, and humor within these alien societies. He also speculates that it's possible no art exists in this alien society. Okay. Here's my hang-up on this. Unimaginative aliens that can travel across space. (laughs) In, there you go. One, that's a big one. Two, how long would it take a person to learn? Let's say you knew nothing about Chinese culture. Nothing. You've never heard mm-hmm. of it. You've never seen You've never heard the language. You've never seen anything. Nothing. You've never seen it. How long is it going to take you from accounts of individuals, people, coming to you, individuals coming to you and telling you about their experience in China to extrapolate that kind of data that they have no humor, that they have no emotion, no sarcasm, no irony. There's no art. They're boring. You Wouldn't you have to go there? Wouldn't you have to yeah. actually like interact You'd have to have some sort of understanding of their personality. Yeah, that makes sense. I To me, to to take someone else's account of all the, the these people going to China and never having gone there yourself and then claim that you know all these things about that culture, I just am like, hold on, you've never been there? That's the first thing I would say. If somebody wrote a book about China... And, and and I read it and I was like, wow, this guy knows a lot about China. And then I talked to him and said, oh, so uh, did you learn this by going to China? And he goes, no, I just talked to a bunch of people that went there. I'd be like, whoa, wait a minute. This is like you said, this is China. You've never even been there. Yeah. I'd be like, well, yeah, but I talked to a lot of people who have. And I go, well, that's not the same thing. I mean, isn't that reasonable? Makes sense to me. I've never been to Antarctica. I've listened to a lot of people talk about Antarctica. I don't know shit about Antarctica. I'm not going to claim to. I've never been there. I don't don't understand that. That's the dumbest shit to me. You're, You're making all these claims about an alien culture. They have no humor. They have no art. They're just, they have no sense of individuality, no sense, none of this, ah, da, 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 da. but you've never been there. Clearly, he's, ne- he's never been abducted. This is the author extrapolating this from these other people. 
Talk about hearsay. It's not even hearsay. It's hearsay's hearsay. It's fucking third generation bullshit. I'm beside myself. Anyways, I just, it's just, it's aggravating. Okay? It's aggravating. I want to believe. I want to believe. Like I said, I don't necessarily want to believe that there's an alien. Just bring something to the table when you make these claims. Don't just tell us. Show us. Give us something to go off of. Show us. I mean, you could say I'm kind of doing the same thing, but I'm also trying to dig, and you guys are along the journey with me. That's why. Mm-hmm. I'm showing you the dirt I dig up. But I'm still it's looking just, for the uh, treasure. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's why we're here. That's right. We're doing the digging so you don't have to. Stare at that pile. Mm, treasure. So, treasure. <laughs> Anyways, I just found that extremely, extremely presumptuous. Mm-hmm. To learn the subtle nuances of their language, their emotions, their societal structure, by based on a, a handful of people describing their momentary experience in a in a in a moment of trauma it's not reliable nope he goes on into the training structure of the alien hybrids training he says every aspect of human society is examined by the slave trainers they are humans they are humans That's so just the way the way he makes it out to be. He makes it out like these people are teachers. They are fucking slaves, human slaves that are trying to tell an alien human hybrid how to be a human. It's there's nothing. There's no examining human society. They live in human society. Just the way the way it's made out is is absolutely made to make it seem like more than it is. These are humans plucked out of society that are trying to explain their existence to something that's never done it. You mean all the things that we broadcasted. I mean, we send music, movies, speeches out into space. We broadcast this crap out into space. If they're here on the planet, it, what you don't have Wi-Fi, you can't go on social media, YouTube, you can't see what it's like to be a human without having to have some lowly basic human teacher advanced self. One on one training. One on one training and you're getting the perspective of one human. One you can just sit in your little hive and go on the internet and be like, oh, this is how they do shit. It's it, it this is gonna continue to pop up. Yeah. Is that the way that the the fact that they continue to reference this alien race as so advanced that they can breed humans with aliens with all their scientific laboratory shit all this stuff but they can't figure out how aliens smile or or humans smile and, and interact with each other. It's absolute nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. It's absolute nonsense to think that an advanced civilization, as you just said, can't tap into the cloud. For fuck's sakes. It's just, it's unreal. It's unreal to think. That's where the, it's it's wishful thinking because they want them to be advanced aliens. But then they, they bring this primitive, humanitarian, you know, animalistic side to their brain. Which is like, no, that wouldn't be the case. Look at us. We don't look at ants and think about their emotional state. That's exactly what it would be like if you have an alien race that stumbles on Earth, upon Earth. They're not going to be curious how you brush your hair. It's just, it's un, it's unbelievable. It's like, it's, why do people make human existence out to be so special? Not that I'm saying that we're not amazing things. You know. But we're not amazing they, things to other things. We're just things. 
they could be coming all this way for our awesome dad jokes. Yeah, for sure, dude. For sure, the dad jokes. That's that's the ba- that's what they're here for. That's right, dad joke. That's right. Pull my finger. Mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> I'm so glad I get to hear you fart the whole episode. Dude, me too. Uh, me too. I'll, awesome. I'll try and throw some more in, but that one's very versatile. Yeah. yeah, it really is. So he goes on to say that during this training structure that uh, these human alien, uh, these alien hybrids are put into situations that the slave would teach them how to react in. For example, uh, again, asinine, to navigate in a conversation when to stay quiet and listen, how to introduce themselves. You know how many tutorials of how to make friends and have conversations there are on YouTube? Dude, I mean, just plug in. Yes, we've never had a self-help book. (laughs) Just, yeah, the idea that you have to abduct human, what an inefficient way to train an alien hybrid. Yeah. Unbelievable. So Jacobs also points out in his book that these alien beings are able to implant memories to enact mind control in a number of ways, including committing actions that people wouldn't normally have. And again, I'm going to bring up the boogeyman idea. You don't need aliens to do that. Look, I'm going to here. Here's what I'm going to do. Think about this. Aliens abduct people against their will to implant memories or brainwash them into becoming puppets for a larger agenda. Now take that same sentence, replace aliens with government, and it's equally as believable. I argue more so because in my mind, it doesn't require an advanced alien race traveling the cosmos to be true, it requires humans with power, and that already exists. Just look at the JFK assassination. Dude, the government abducts people against their will to implant memories or brainwash them into becoming puppets for a larger agenda. Mm-hmm. It, that's, that is true. The aliens is yet to be proven. It's just easier to explain to say, hey, aliens did it than, hey, the CIA took me. That's why I pick on people like Greer and Linda Mountain Howe mm-hmm. and Lou Elizondo is because they continue to point things like this out instead of highlighting. Now, what they point out that the government does is that the government keeps secrets. Yes, that's true. But, no shit. but the fact that they're keeping secrets about aliens that these people all say, well, that's the big smoking gun. No, it's not. The secrets are who's child trafficking? Who's on Epstein's client list? Who is Ghislaine Maxwell working with? Who are the politicians really paid by? Who's making money off of us that are in indentured servitude? Who's really making the money? Why the fuck are we still paying taxes when you fucking cocksuckers can print money? Those are the real questions. Not is there an alien race hovering over the planet? You fucking dipshits. I'm so tired of this shit. We got problems here on planet Earth. We can't get rid of. And all that we have is false flag after false flag after false flag that pulls attention away from what matters. And then you have people that come out and love to give people these tidbits of whatever you want to call it. Whatever you want. Hope. Uh, Whatever you want to call it, some people see this as hope. Some people see this as a threat. Either way, you can't prove it. So all it does is it takes away from the main conversation, which is who the real villains are. The people who do have control over you, the government. That's the real problem. I guarantee you right now, if aliens really want to take over the earth, it's fucking done. It's done. It's already done. You just don't know it. That's how good they did it. It's already done. You think you'd think they're going to come in and wave a flag going, hey, by the way, we're here uh, and we're taking you over. (laughs) No. No. 
They're going to do it right underneath your noses. And if they do it the right way, you're never going to know anything changed. That's the way a real takeover works. I've been in hostile company takeovers where the people at the bottom don't feel a goddamn thing. But the management takes it in the ass. That's what happens. That's what happens. So if aliens did take over, well, then that means that those that are in government are working for them or are them. And I'm, I apologize for yelling, but Preach, brother is beautiful. I'm telling you that this is what bothers me so much about this is that they want to make it out like we have this threat of aliens that are abducting everybody and, and, and artificially inseminating people. When you have government sanctioned rape, you have government sanctioned child trafficking, you have government sanctioned human trafficking, you have government sanctioned stars, it's globally. Globally. Absolutely right. So this stuff to me is just hearsay. And I like to look at it because it is interesting. It's a, it's a very big glimpse into psychology, I think, of people and how they view themselves and how they view, you, view the universe around them. Mm -hmm. That's what I find fascinating. What I find unbelievably frustrating is when you have people in uh, in a form of authority, Linda Mountain Howe, who has a range of fans, UFO researcher, ufologist, waves that flag everywhere, absolutely putting out false stories, disinformation, verified. Greer, who won't disclose shit, but demands that the government discloses everything. You have Lou Elizondo, who worked, who was the director of ATIP, didn't give the people anything, and still doesn't give the people anything due to his credentials, and he can't. Go fuck yourself, every single one of you. I'm tired of it. I should have taken my meds this morning. It's okay. Oh, no I like you, little fiery. You it's fun. You should be medicated. Yeah, you should. <laughs> I just, if if the UFO community as a whole could get down on one thing, could get down on one tenant, which is where is the evidence that we can verify, that we can take to court? Everything else needs to be put in a category of unverifiable now you can say that the craft may have been identified there's no way of knowing who's piloting it so it doesn't matter what it looks like doesn't matter there's no way of verifying the government's never going to come out and say they were piloting it you're never going to get an alien down to interview them that they were saying oh yeah i was flying that one never going to happen so it's completely unverifiable completely every single one of these photos that comes out every single one of these videos that comes out a hundred percent unverifiable it's fun to look at it's fun to go over but it does nothing to verify the question at hand which is is are there aliens out there or is it our own government doing this to us to keep us in some weird form of control which i think is more feasible and more logical it makes sense that's what kills me about the alien agenda stuff. It pulls attention away from the real global terrorists on earth government fucks to an unseen threat, again, that can't be verified. And, and not to mention the fact that they are just using it to justify throwing more and more money into studying this unverifiable phenomena. So it's just, you know, yeah. And look, take the, uh, the, the most recent case, the NIM aviation logo. I talked about this, uh, last night on the, on the bonus episode, Patreon members, you're welcome. The NIM aviation logo, check that shit out. Have you seen this, Nate? 
Uh, no. Dude. So, NIM Aviation is, um, um, I can't remember what the actual department does. But anyways, but basically, they're the ones... Uh, oh, oh, NIM Aviation serves as the Director of National Intelligence, Principal Advisor on Air Domain Issues, leading efforts to identify, analyze, and integrate intelligence on threats and vulnerabilities in the skies. So that sounds pretty legit, right? So in their logo, and I'm showing it to, the, to the audience right now. I'm, go I'm check. I'm looking it. at it myself. There you go. There is a UFO in the logo, bottom left-hand corner. Of the circle. Now, here's what's interesting. Now, yeah, that's fascinating, the fact that it ended up there in the first place. What's more fascinating is that the next day it disappeared. Okay? It was gone. What happened? They released an official statement saying it was an internal image that was not meant to be released. False fucking flag. There is no way that didn't pass through three hands before it was released to the public. No way. So that logo changed to where now it is without the UFO. Yeah, that's crazy. Therefore, again, again, verifying the fact that they are fucking with you. They are fucking with you, with us, with all of us. Oh, watch, guys. We'll put a UFO in there. It'll get everybody going, and then we'll take it away. I, why else? There is no way that passed through at no less than three hands without somebody going, hey, why is there a UFO in this? <clears throat> no way. Hmm. Yeah. Insane. Telling you. Telling you. This is false flag. And as I said in the bonus episode, which you should go check out, I'll give you just a tidbit. They are staging something. You've got China in space that is expanding their reach in space. You've got Space Force, which has specifically said, we will make space our, we will be the superiority in space. There will be a space war between countries. We will have war here on Earth. It's going to get crazy, people. And you have this. This fucking logo of a UFO shows up. Why? Because they don't want you looking at what's really going on. As soon as that war starts, you're going to be seeing a whole lot more of them and their are craft, not, the, not some alien craft. Damn straight. Damn That's straight. Space Force. That's right. God damn it. So whatever you think about this guy Jacob's claims, Alien hybrid programs, all that stuff. The crazy thing to me, in the book of Genesis, in the Bible, well, let me, let me go back a little bit. Ancient astronauts, the ancient astronaut theory, will tell you that human-alien hybridization has been going on for thousands of years. In fact, that's the whole tale of the Anunnaki, that they came down and, and bred with humans. But that's one time, one time that they jump-started the human race. There's argument that they've been doing it for thousands of years. Again, unverifiable. It's all unverifiable. Except that one article that came out that found supposed alien DNA in a 400,000-year-old thigh bone. The Immaculate Conception. Mary getting pregnant could be seen as artificial implant of an embryo containing alien DNA. Mary had a dream where an angel told her she was going to give birth to a child. Mm -hmm. She got pregnant. Joseph was pissed. They found a manger. The rest is history. The only difference is she didn't get hypnotically regressed to know she had actually been abducted and impregnated by aliens, not God. There was no man in a plaid suit sitting in the manger going, let's walk you through your memories, shall we? 
Maybe there was. Maybe one of the wise men was uh, was Larry. Could have been. In the book of Genesis, verses 1 through 4, it is said, When human beings began to increase in number on the earth, and daughters were born to them, the sons... It's on the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> the sons of God saw the daughters of humans were beautiful, and they married any of them they chose. If you think for a moment that the sons of God were actually aliens, it could point out, could point to inbreeding, interbreeding, mm-hmm. I guess is what that would be, between race of uh, aliens and humans. Yeah. The book of Enoch, which we've talked about before, mentions an alien race as opposed to angels. The best example of that is from uh, Lamech, father of Noah. When he saw his son shine, he accused his wife of being intimate with the sons of God. Lamech raised the child as if he were his own. Human-alien hybrid. There you go. A lot of these claims are really easy to dismiss I, as I went on my rant about. A lot of them are because it's unverifiable. But it is interesting the amount of people saying the same thing over many years. That does make it very interesting. But as I pointed out also, people can be manipulative and they can lie for personal gain even if it's for a few book deals and some interviews. So human beings are capable of being deceptive. Humans are capable of being narcissistic and wanting their lives to mean more and making shit up to do just that. I mean, kids are a great example of that. A lot of kids exaggerate things. Why? Because they want They want things to be big. They want things to be grandiose. They want things to be exciting. So that's my issue with these is that we'll never know really, based on these, we'll never know really what's going on with the alien-human hybrid situation because of the Mm. fact that you have people that seem to be muddying the waters. Know what I mean? As usual. As usual. As usual. And as usual, I want to know what you all think. I want to know. Always. If you have stories, you have experiences, you just want to reach out, you can email. Good Lord. (laughs) If you have stories, experience, reach out. Link is in the show notes. To the email, we are building a tin foil militia. My people. My people. Uh, I want you all in the ranks, so go do it. I fucked that up. But <laughs> go check it out. Patreon.com slash UFO No Podcast is where you can go get signed up and donate whatever you can. Uh, I do appreciate it. Uh, but I want to give a shout out to my people right now. Casey Armadillo. Michael Ralston, Rihanna Little, Aaron Rice, Jesse, Jet Life Teague, Michael Benavides, Carlton Turner, Matthew Morfitt. I love every single one of you badass motherfuckers. I love you. It means the world to me. Um, y'all can get signed up. You get access to the Discord where you go chat with us live uh, Friday night's episode, sometimes Saturday morning's episode, depending on what we're doing and how we're doing it, but definitely Friday nights. Uh, you can, too, be a part of Tin Foy Militia, patreon.com slash UFO podcast. Go and do it. You get a new episode each and every single week just for members. Uh, bonus content coming soon. I'm adding a whole bunch of new stuff, guys. I'm telling you, I got my shit together. This thing is going to launch in a whole new way. It's going to be fantastic. 
Um, and again, any donation means the world to me. Now for my general shout outs, Black Coast, Wet Wired Brand, Killer Band of the UK. Thanks, guys. Casey Leesky. Uh, again, I got to shout out Matthew Morford again because he gave us some excellent, excellent uh, show topic ideas uh, that were really fun. We had a ball with uh, Valiant Thor, Galactic Federation, our top 10 sightings. All from uh, uh, Matthew Morfitt saying, hey, you guys should talk about this. And uh, Keep them coming. Keep them coming. It was really, really fun. Uh, Ridiculous Patronus, your scented memory. Gigi Holland, the Slime King plays. Uh, and a gentleman named Nate. I assume that's not you, Nate, but it could be. Uh, Am I? I don't know. Uh, left a review. Thank you all so much. Those help just as much. I really, really appreciate you so much. Uh, my sister, Christy. Uh, the whole family, Jesse, Zoe, Emma, thank you all for listening. And, of course, Josh from Camp Verde, Arizona. I want to be abducted, but not in a bad way, uh, for sure. Wrote us some great stories. We read those on the show. It was awesome. So be sure, get yourself some sweet-ass merch in the link. Show notes, portal to all things UFO know. Everyone who's bought merch, tag UFO podcast with your gear um, on the Instagram. I would love to put you up there and highlight you. Let's help build this thing, shall we? Uh, if you want to get a shout out, let me know you listen to the show or donate. It's that simple. And of course, if you like the show, be sure to share this episode. Give us a nice review and hit that subscribe button wherever you're listening or watching. Nate, where can the people follow you, bud? Ooh, you guys can follow me on Boldly Gone on Facebook. Boldly Gone. I'll put a link in the show notes. All you got to do is click it. Link in the show notes. Go follow Nate. And uh, I don't put my own personal shit. I just do the show, but uh, you guys can find me. So uh, that's it. That's it for us. I do. I really, really do want to know what you all think about this. Uh, and I know I went hard on the political stuff, and I apologize. I just, it's frustrating to see the state of the world we're in. And to it's see good. that there is this, there is this uh, distraction. And that's what I look at it as, as a distraction. And it's a fun distraction. That's kind of the whole point of the show. Take a break from the propaganda and all that shit. But at the same time, it's really bad what's going on, folks. And, and uh, that's the real enemy. It's not an alien species. Because I'm telling you right now, if they wanted to take over the world, they'd already do it. It'd already be done. If they wanted you kidnapped, if they wanted your babies, if they wanted your balls, if they wanted your titties, they'd already have it. All. They'd already have it. They'd already have it if they're that advanced. So don't worry about it. If, if, it, if they wanted it, it'd be done. And hey, they must not want it because it's not done. But guess what? Government is real. Those motherfuckers do exist, and they do want power, and they're getting it. And that's what we should keep an eye on. So, anyways, I love you all. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. As I say, stay elevated. Keep your eyes to the skies and watch out for the government. They're shoisty bastards. Bye.